a new application uh, with digital pathology. My guest today is Dr. Frank Volker. For those of you who've been around Aperio a while, you'll know that he's no stranger to us. Uh, many, uh, many of the suggestions in our software now, particularly in image scope, um, with viewing and things like that, and some of the algorithms were uh, made at his uh, begging, pleading suggestions over the last uh, five, or six, five years or so. Just a quick bio on Dr. Volker. Um, Actually, before I do that, just a comment. This will go about, about 30 minutes, and if you have any questions, please just chat them in, and then Dr. Burke Volker will take them at the end. Uh, we will also post this online, so you can follow up there as well. Um, so just to introduce Dr. Volker. He recently retired from Novartis after 30 years working as a tox pathologist at a number of pharma companies, Novartis, Pathology Associates, TSI Mason, and Burroughs Welcome. He's been an early pioneer in the use of image and al algorithms toxicology and experimental pathology, along with specialized work in diabetes and rhabdomyolysis. Uh, he's a board-certified pathologist, a longtime member of Society of Tox Pathology and American College of Veterinary Pathology. His bachelor's de degree goes back to the University of Minnesota, and he also has a veterinary degree from the University of Minnesota. He has a master's degree from Michigan State, and uh, um, back more recently, he and another pathologist, Dr. David Young, uh, together co-founded a new company, Flagship, which you will probably hear about uh, later in the presentation. Uh, welcome, Frank. Look forward to your talk. Well, thank you for the introduction, Steve. Uh, I'm very honored to be here uh, today to be able to present this. Uh, I'm going to talk about a new algorithm that we have put together, uh, which will measure fat and uh, various vacuolar spaces in tissue, and uh, uh, we're quite proud of it. Uh, a number of years ago, uh, I was providing support pathology uh, to a number of investigators, and uh, uh, these investigators would come to me with requests to measure uh, diameters and areas of fat cells, uh, whether it was white fat or brown fat. And then later, uh, I also had a request to measure the amount of fat and fatty livers. And so, I had difficulty doing that and, and uh, so realized that perhaps an algorithm might be necessary to measure these um, clear spaces and tissues that represented fat. And uh, with that, uh, we developed the algorithm and it's actually in the process of being developed at this time. And what it does is it measures circumscribed or sharply demarcated clear spaces and tissue. And this is especially valuable for uh, uh, quantitating uh, white fat, uh, for measuring vacuoles and brown fat, and also uh, vacuoles in a variety of tissues, including fatty liver or maybe adrenal cortex. And uh, we found out later that it's also uh, it can be used to measure um, skeletal muscle fiber diameters and uh, perhaps even the hollow spaces in glandular lumina or hollow spaces uh, that comprise alveoli in lung. So when we put this together, we had to realize what the requirements might be for such an algorithm, and, and we determined that it would be good to be able to measure percent area, say, of a total uh, or region, uh, uh, percent area of fat or vacuole or space, uh, the total number of spaces that we're counting, and also to measure the mean area, diameter, or perimeter of those spaces together with histograms of the individual uh, components. Uh, also, we determined that the important thing to, uh, evaluate to was to be able to have a threshold control of shape and area so that we could screen out two large spaces or two small spaces uh, or shape. Also, hue sensitivity adjustment was important, and we'll show uh, what that means at a later point in the uh, presentation. Also, membrane estimation or completion. In other words, for example, in white fat, if you have broken membranes, uh, we needed a, the ability to be able to, uh, first of all, how is the image analyzed? One of the first considerations is to define the tissue intensity. In other words, what we're defining is the relative contrast of the peripheral tissue to the central vacuole that we're uh, quantitating or, or measuring. And in this case, in terms of white fat, uh, we can see that there's a very relative thin rim of cytoplasm uh, enclosing a fairly large area of central lipid. And 
So we have we can adjust the contrast between that periphery and the center. Uh, we also need to be able to define the maximum size of each space as well as the minimum size. Uh, finally, we need to determine how close each vacuole uh, resembles a circle, whether it's pancake shaped or flattened, and how tightly all of these are packed together. So shape is a very big consideration. And in terms of perimeter estimation, I talked about that a minute ago. A lot of times when you're looking at fat, uh, there's an artifactual breakage of the membrane between two fat cells. Uh, we don't know why this occurs, uh, but it uh, either occurs during trimming or during sectioning. Uh, but in order to be able to effectively measure fat cells, it's nice to be able to repair that breakage. And uh, uh, I'll show you how that happens in a bit. Uh, here's white fat. And as you can see, it's it's sort of a, a collection of globular cells, uh, but many of these cells are not necessarily spherical. And in fact, when we're sectioned through a tissue, it's sort of like sectioning through a basket full of tennis balls. We're sectioning through the ends of some balls, and these represent the smaller circles that you see here. And sometimes we're sectioning through the maximum diameter of these circles, and we see the larger ones. However, not all the spheres are spherical. Many of them are pancake-shaped, uh, and, and they're packed together, and they have all sorts of odd shapes, and it's sort of a stereological nightmare. Uh, but what we want to be able to do is to get an average diameter, average area, um, or average perimeter of each of these fat cells, and we can work with them once we have those numbers. Uh, also to remind you that what we're seeing here is uh, in this fatty tissue, we're not really seeing fat because the fat has all been removed during processing. Uh, the fat is very soluble in some of the solvents used in processing. And if we were to be able to see the fat, we would have to uh, take a frozen section of this uh, fatty tissue and stain it with oil red oil. The problem with taking frozen sections is that uh, you have a lot of artifact, and it's much easier to to uh, use frozen uh, or to use formal and fixed tissue for evaluation. So that's what we're set with, and we know from experience that the empty spaces that we see in many of these cells and many of the other tissues are in reality fat, just based on their appearance. Uh, this is an example of the algorithm. Uh, in the left-hand pane, again, is the H&E uh, uh, section of fat, and the right-hand pane is a markup image of the way the algorithm works. Now, this is a first-pass algorithm in this case, and you can see that many of the uh, uh, fat cells are small. They're too small, and the smallness of those markup images does not 